I'll, I'll do a very quick intro. So we're just chatting with Descalada, the author of the updated version of the UIA automation Hello. stuff. And um, I, I know there was already some stuff there, but you've been, you know, putting more and more into it. Um, yeah. And, and we just thought we'd we'd have a chat with you to, under, you know, see if you've done anything else that's really fun and interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, the last time we had this chat, I've um, improved it a lot, implemented some changes, uh, as I uh, recommended and other stuff as well. Oh. So uh, how do you want to get started? Well, let's see. I mean, do you have any, is there any big ahas of like what change we didn't have before that is now available or did you change? Well, um, perhaps uh, the one uh, that... Uh, that you mentioned in like the first video, I think that you have to start the properties with the current keyword. So yeah. you don't have to do that for a while now. Oh, cool. Mm. And, uh, and you can use the, uh, the expression syntax that is used in fi uh, find first by, you can use it uh, almost anywhere, uh, like find first uh, can accept uh, those expressions, expressions as well. So yeah, you can just great. use find first. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and we, I know. We... Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I was talking to, to Zayas about it, of the, the tree walker was one area that um, yeah. we were hoping to get a little more, a little review on. Um, mm -hmm. it was a I, I think the, the, there's something, I, I have a question before we dive into that one, because that one is a little bit more complex, but we were working with a um, with a client that he was doing some UIA stuff with Power BI, and we were having this situation in which we were returning a, a lot of objects, right? That we were using the find by expression uh, or find, find, yeah, it was find by, and for the objects that he was returning, there were some that, that were visible and some that were hidden. So we had to do two find buys. One of them was for the <laughs> uh, um, uh, visible ones and the other ones for the hidden ones. I thought, hey, I could use an or statement in the expression, like find yeah. this or find that. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, that didn't work. That was the first mm -hmm. thing. So I had to do two separate ones. And then I had to merge the two lists because you know that it returns a race, right? So it returned yeah. five before and then two later. And I had to mix them. But when I was mixing them, they were not in the correct order. <laughs> so that was, yeah, it was a very tricky situation. Now, First of all, my first question will be, is there any reasons why the or statement wouldn't have worked with a find by? Do you know about any issues that might be on that particular? I, I'm not sure. Uh, I would uh, have to see the actual expression that you used. Let me, let me just write something real quick that is similar to what I was trying, not the expression itself, but very similar. And... Um, let me do this. It was kind of like uh, find by, and then it was name equals, let me make it bigger, name equals, uh, you know, one, two, three, or name equals test. So if I have an expression like this, mm -hmm. I would assume that this is, this must be capitalized. Is that right? Uh, no, it doesn't have to be capitalized. Okay. It can be. Oh, you know what happens? Because that might be one of the issues. If in the ex in the first expression, there's anything that has the or in it. Yeah. It yeah. might break, right? Right. Uh, yeah. That, that is one uh, of the So things. you can actually get around that. Uh, you can uh, put uh, one, two, three uh, inside single parentheses. All right. So yeah, so, then uh, you I, uh, single parentheses. Uh, no, uh, oh, sorry, not parentheses. Uh, quote single yeah, quote, oh, single uh, quote. One, two, okay, three. Okay, yeah. that yeah. you see. That's the reason why I'm talking to you because so this if is that contains that... an or, then it won't be. Um, All right, that that, that yeah. won't be read like that. That's a good thing to know. 
because mm-hmm. it might be one of the things that was tripping out the 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 expression. Um, the other thing is it possible to use the operands like this? So there is like yes, um, or and yes, you can not. use those. Oh right, okay, because at that yeah, point, and I- for for not conditions, you can use the exp- exclamation mark as well, like this. Not yeah, yeah, exactly. Not name equals test. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so expressions at this point, I understand that I could do something like find, find first or, or find by. Uh, find so, first by, yeah, or find first. First by, so object, that would be object.find first by, and that would be my thing. Now, my other thing was the, you know that you have the type of match that you're mm-hmm. going to do. It could be one, two, or three, right? One, if I remember correctly, is left, contains, or exact. Is that right? Uh, yeah, it uh, it uses the same uh, syntax as uh, other hotkey does in other places. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, set the title match mode. Right. So two is anywhere, one is uh, from the beginning, reg X. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And three is exact. Three is equal. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So now what I would do. But it's, comp- the, it's the third argument in find first by. So oh, right. Yeah. You yeah. have that's, expression, that's... then scope, then match mode. Scope and match mode. I think, yeah. I think this, I don't think you should change that now, but it is something to consider at some point. Making the match the second parameter, because I usually don't change the scope. Yeah. I usually it, do the whole scope. It's exactly like that in the next version. Um, oh, but right. I, I, I'm developing it for um, AHK uh, V2. Right. Uh, okay. I don't think I'm going to be backboarding it. <laughs> it no, no, that's perfect. Other stuff. no, 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 that's perfect. Yeah. If it is for V2, I am actually I switched already to V2. So the second parameter should be the match, and the next one would be the one that yeah. doesn't change I, that. I agree. I agree. Okay. That's I mean, one... Microsoft developed it like that in in that order. Like usually, the yeah, scope yeah, is first. I understand. Yeah, and yeah. It, I don't know why they did it. No. Probably because uh, they don't want you to use the tree scope descendants because it, uh, yeah, it's so slow. It is. Yeah, they want you to use that children tree scope instead. Right. In general, for me, it doesn't make sense to put parameters in front that you don't change that often. That's that which I guess you I agree totally with agree. very often. Right. <laughs> now, the other thing that I usually do, and this is something, um, this is let me do it with. Uh, hold on, I think I would go here for this guy. Uh, no, for Gene. This is something that I do is not like you must do it this way, but just consider this. So usually, when I create a library, let me go to the source library. I have a library here. So, mm-hmm. usually, when I create a library like this one that is going to be used in um, other, so let um, me just one second. This is not marking up because I have to trust it. I trust everything in Dropbox. That's okay. That's better. So when I create a library like this, this is just a class that I use very often. And especially in V2, this is very useful. In the library, I define some variables that later on, when I'm using the thing, I just use that status fail variable. You see how it gets kind of like suggested to me? Mm-hmm. And that has the number that I'm going to be using later because four doesn't make any sense. Log add four. What does four mean? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. But if you have a variable. So, uh, then it yeah, you, you, are, uh, you are using, um, so you are using uh, enumerations uh, yeah. as a global variable. Yeah. Right. So that later on, when I when I look at my code, I don't have to wonder what that is. So if that was a three, yeah, on set three current resolution, what does three mean? 
this particular instance. Mm -hmm. But if I have it like this, it doesn't matter if I understand the code or not. I add an information value, which is whatever I'm adding at that point. Yes. Or here, failed or whatever. So again, this is uh, just kind of like... I, I did have <laughs> that problem. Well, the, uh, I think the first um, first UIA library that uh, was created by Jetro, I think, uh -huh. uh, he used um, uh, the, the constants or enumerations as the global right. variables as you do. Right. Uh, and uh, I have the UIA constants.dhk52, which uh, contains mm -hmm. all the enumerations as global, global variables. Uh, but uh, in the end, I decided that uh, it would probably better not to pollute the namespace Ex that much. That's what the because next UIA thing has so about. many different right. enumerations. Right. It, I, I didn't think it wise. Uh, so I put it all in the UIA in the enum. Class. Class right, exactly. Where like you can now, access them. Now, do, do you have those that we're referring to in that enum class? Because I didn't see them. Uh, which ones? The the ones for the search. The the, the tree scope. Or... No, the tree scope, you have them, but for the ones for the matching type. Oh, matching. no, no, right, no. That, that's it, what I'm yeah. actually suggesting then. Just add those, even though they are not in the original. I think Does AHK have uh, such a thing? No, I know. No, that doesn't. Originally, no, right? Yeah. No, no, mm -hmm. no, not really. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think this is part of how languages naturally evolve. So usually when you take a C++ program, you will see those enumerations being used very often. Mm -hmm. People don't like them because now you have to include the enumeration files. But if you include them in the same library, you just do one include and you have them. That's what I do. <laughs> But um, in this case, I, I would find it very useful if the, in the enum class, you have also those for matching type, even though they're not in the original or whatever, but it makes your code a little bit clearer or, on your intention of what you're trying to do. So yeah, I would just think about that one. But um, I, I do like how the... Uh, how the library is going and and the fact that it's going in in the direction of using v2 that's perfect v2 uh i find it a little bit easier uh how how has it been with for you with v2 uh it's so much nicer to use <laughs> um though i i do hate um uh, I do hate that it throws errors in uh, places <laughs> you don't expect them like you wouldn't <laughs> want them uh, so Again, a design choice. Like right. uh, if you use uh, find first mm -hmm. and it doesn't find an element, do you throw an error? I think, yeah. So this is this is part of, uh, of a very yeah. good, um, this is, now so you're getting deeper into when, programming. When right? should AHK throw errors, errors and when and should when it not? not? This, this yeah. is a very good, very good question. I, I don't think this is exactly the scope of what we're speaking, but it is a good thing to know. So... This is basically design principles. This is something that people might argue about for so. Mm -hmm. So personally, I personally, uh -huh. I don't like to litter my code with the try catch um, blocks. So no, I decided this is, this that, something... uh, that find first should return an empty string. So you can use if element right. dot find first, then you do right. something. Right. So not, so here's not the... put it in a try. Let me summarize the issue you have two options, right? You can either use the return statement or you can use the throw statement. And that is incorrect. People think about it as you either use one or, or use the other one. I you think- You can use both. If you that's do what something I was unexpected, say. then right. you can throw an error. Exactly, if that's-, you, that's If you supply an argument that doesn't match right. the criteria, then, then it should of be course. Blind. Throw an error. No, no. Well, no. exactly. So, no. so, 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 yeah. Yeah. You have to. You, you, match cannot... mode four should throw an error. Like, right. Exactly. It, it isn't an, an accepted match mode. Exactly. Yeah. Or, for example, hey, I cannot look for any for nothing. You have to give me something to search for. So, yeah, exactly. if it is blank, yeah, it, it is an error. But if it is a return, you are returning either a value or you didn't find it. So, the fact that you didn't find it is not an error is actually uh, that it should return blank. So I do a combination of both. 
I have code that I define first what my function is going to return. Well, it can return this, it can return that, it can return whatever. But in certain circumstances, I throw an error. And I usually do that just with functions, methods, and libraries. My main code, for example, when I'm creating my application, the application doesn't throw errors. That means the user never sees an error. So my should main, never see an error. <laughs> they, they should not see an error. They should see messages telling them what to do. So if you supply an empty string, it should tell you, hey, you supplied an empty string, you should do this, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. It's not an error. But the function itself should return, it should throw an error. So the function throws an error, but my main application should try and catch stuff. Yeah, exactly. Right? So that's, mm -hmm. that's how I usually think about code. I think I read that in one of those uh, discussions in, in which what they think when you're designing an application, you have several layers. The top layer is the user interface. In the user interface, you shouldn't throw errors or stuff like that. That's just information boxes and stuff like that. But when you go down to the lowest level, which is methods and functions and libraries, they should throw an error to notify the main application that something went wrong. Now, the application should decide what to do with an error, right? That's that's all there is to it. But it, it was a very good question about, yeah, should I throw an error? No, nah, not really, not always. It is not throw an error for everything. That's really annoying, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, in in V two, that's the that's the problem that I I I can't like um, um, easily uh, see or decide whether an HK function will throw an error or not. For example, uh, if you mm -hmm. if you call file delete and mm -hmm. there is no, uh, is not a um, file uh, with that name, will it throw an error? Well, yes, it will. So, so here's how I see it. In V2, all functions throw errors under certain conditions, all of them. It's just about whether you're expecting that or not. Now, what I would do if you're developing in V2, if you don't want to see any errors ever, just use the on error mess, uh, function. You select a function that always gets called if there's any types of errors and you decide whether to display that to the user or not, I usually have it off, and that's it. So mm -hmm. it, it is a very, it's, it's simple, uh, it's just as simple as saying, so on error and the name of function, log error and return. And now log error, I think it has two parameters or you can ignore them. And now that the return value can be minus one, zero, or one and depending yeah, on that return I mean, value it it either shows the message to the user or not or and does some things but now for the error you could go ahead and log it into a file uh mm -hmm. display a custom message it doesn't matter what you do but in general uh, just uh, by yeah, doing you, this you're taking care of that annoyance <laughs> you can suppress those errors with that yes but um but still um uh what what I meant is that the HK doesn't have any clear guidelines on when errors will be thrown and when uh, like the I think there was the error variable too like um, a last error variable uh -huh. right yeah yeah or when will it uh, return zero or an empty string. So in no, HK think... one it was simple you can no, you, you, like error you level. don't expect any errors. And you don't even have to check the error level. You right. can, but you don't have to. But in right. V2, you can get some unexpected errors. <laughs> right. Which yeah. which, uh, uh, which, uh, which, might lead to wrapping everything in uh, try-catch blocks. <laughs> no, well, not really. But here's the thing. Again, with the on error, you forget about the try-catch, whatever. But here's the thing. I would disagree a little bit with you in the fact that you don't like it. For example, in my case, I like it. I love it because a lot of times I just, by mistake, misspelled one variable. And if you don't get an error at all, what is going to happen is that your program mm -hmm. suppo is supposedly running fine. But then you get these weird situations that something is returning something unexpected or whatever. 
And you're like, why is it returning that? Why is it? And you can spend hours trying to find the error. And it is just a variable that has one letter misspelled. And so the fact that it automatically, as soon as you create a variable, as soon as it tells you, as soon as you try to use a variable, if it has never been defined, it just tells you, hey, yeah. you have never defined this variable. I find it really good for large projects. I do find it. Yeah, I, I am not arguing you. Uh, on <laughs> that. I, I really love that functionality. Right, yeah. But if you have uh, a function call with, uh, which will throw an error under some certain conditions that you haven't thought to test, and then the user will use those conditions, then they will get an ugly error message, right? If no, you don't. Then uh, again, that's where yeah. the on error actually goes with. That means mm -hmm. that the user will never get those errors if you don't want yeah. to, right? But um, now switching back to UIA, we were uh, Joe mentioned something regarding the tree, um, the tree walker. Mm -hmm. So okay, uh, I have understood a little bit better the patterns, right? I have been using mm -hmm. them very often. I understand that each pattern behaves differently and so on. Yes, but <clears throat> certain times I want to find an object, say a button. And now I want to click the next button, the one right, that is right next to it. And what mm -hmm. I'm understanding is that with the tree walker, I could do that. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, so you you have multiple options there. You can use the tree walker or you can use um, uh, find by path, which, um, which is like a simplification for tree walkers. So if you if you have a button element and you want to get the next button element in, in the tree, then you can use find by path uh, plus one, oh, and you I can remember. add a, a button condition. So uh -huh. type equals button. Yeah. So I, it will filter only for buttons and will get the next element in the tree. I I, I, I do yeah. remember last time we had the chat, you were talking about that. Now, yeah. for example, would that be out of the question? The scalar, yeah. can, you, can you show an example? Do you have any examples? I, I don't have any examples. Let me, let right me, now, let me, let me do this. Just because no, you know, people I, are going to watch this and right, yeah. they're going to be and wondering what the follow, heck we're talking you know, about. You yeah. are at a different level than everyone else. Including... Let, me, let me go ahead and open it up. I think I, I, we could open, I think it was B. It's, it's like, you're like, let me, let me, let me talk about brain surgery and what you have to do. And people are like, <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So let me go to the libraries. I think it's V1 in this case, and I have UI automation here. So let me open that up. And we have some examples. Uh, can you update it too? I do have to. Joe was, oh, there you go. 69 differences. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I had an updated for, oh, hold on, cancel. That means that I have a few things, a few changes. Let me stash them up. There we go. Now let's synchronize the changes. There we go. Now, right. now I could just remove the stashing. So what I was thinking is, for example, for Notepad, we already have mm -hmm. the connection and stuff like that, but I could definitely use, so we have the, so this is my Notepad element, right? So what you're saying is that I could just use this find by path, right? Yeah. And now the path is what we want to search for and then C. What is the C, the condition, I would assume, right? Yeah, that's the condition, which can be uh, uh, the object, uh, uh -huh. which you can create with uh, create conditions, or it can be a string, um, the, oh, the okay. expression uh, syntax, right? Oh, right. So you can uh, write type equals button. Oh, right. Perfect. So basically, I could find like, name equals or what was it or yeah type edit for example i could use this here as a string instead of using the condition creator yes right? exactly now the condition and this is something for anybody watching that that would be a uh is part of the uia and it creates an object that matches certain conditions and that is a tricky thing because the condition can be either and, either or, or either not. It cannot be like at the same time. You have, if you want something that matches both things, you have to create two 
separate conditions and then create a condition that has them both. Is that what is that true? So so uh, so, so maybe, um... <laughs> create condition. So you you can create an and condition. Yeah, so using the UIA built-in methods, it's really annoying, <laughs> sorry. Um, that, that's what I'm saying, that, that's exactly UIA. what I'm referring yeah, to. Yeah, 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 so you have to create example. and condition. No, uh, you have right. to, uh, if you are using UIA create and condition, then it will expect an UIA condition object. Oh, so you have to use UIA create. Um, UIA. But create. Uh, create condition this one here oh my god so you would yeah. have to create so this you, here you would have to supply the type and uh, the document right yeah so that and creates the document condition then you create uh, another the condition for the edit um hold on so type is the so document. according yes, to this exactly properties type the value would be document i don't yes. care about the flags right now Yes. This is the document condition. Yeah. Condition. And then you and create then the edit you have condition. To create the same, but at this point with type edit. And then this is the, not the doc, but this is the edit. And then you have, to, if you want an and, you have to create the doc and the, so you see that. So you have to build all that. And that gives you an and condition. And condition. Now, if you want that, or another condition now you have to create another condition like let's say another and condition that is type button and type <laughs> <laughs> drop down or whatever right so now this is your your button and this is your drop down now i need another and condition for those two button condition DD condition, and this is my <laughs> buttons, and and now you would have to create an or condition, or condition that has UIA dot create or condition, and now it has the button. Sorry, yeah. So it would you know be this reminds me of the board that or that. Oh it my God! It's such the, the face. So targeting you know where you can't you can't <laughs> right away like this and this and this and not that like no exactly you cannot just yeah. linearly create right. them you, you have to first and then right you so to... you have to create the and condition for both here the and condition for these two and then create an or condition of those two and conditions it's, it's really complex annoying i really don't like it that's and the, actually, it is even more annoying and complex because uh, the original UI automation doesn't have the create condition method. <laughs> it has create property condition right. where you have to supply the enumerations. Right. You have to supply an integer for type, control type, and integer for document and edit. Right. So, it's really it's horrible. It's, it is horrible. That, that's one of the points why we tell people, you know, UIA is amazing to use, especially when you understand the concept. You know how I, how I just typed that because I understand what I'm trying to do. But getting to understand this is really annoying. It's not a straightforward path. Now, once you know it, like it, you get the concept of it, you get the gist of it, and it's going to be a little bit easier to create your own. But in the at the beginning, just trying to wrap your head around this is really complicated. But what you're saying is that when I do the find by path, I don't have to deal with conditions at all. I could just type the uh, the expression here, and it would automatically just go ahead and uh, create the conditions for me. Right? Exactly. Perfect. Exactly that. Perfect. So now, if I have this the find by path, then I could add something at the beginning which was what the search path so that would be yeah so if you if you want the first child. edit element so i think you have to supply one right just so one then, yeah just so find the first one yeah plus one would be like just the next one right next to it uh without the uh, first one yeah plus one just plus one all right we'll get okay. the next one in the in the tree but the thing is you have uh, the notepad element 
So mm -hmm. currently you are in the um, Windows um, right, the window, section the of main the tree, window, right? right? So it might uh, give you an edit element from another window. Uh, uh -huh. I'm not exactly sure how that will uh, work, but right. better to yeah, yeah, supply course. just one without the plus. Let's say button, for example. It would give me the next button. So I would, if I have a, this filters and this tells me the hierarchy. Where to go. Right, okay. So this filters, yeah. it will find the first button and as once it finds the first button, then I can tell it what to do. Just re mm -hmm. return the first one. So just it doesn't the next one. It 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 returns the first button um, in the same level of the tree. Okay. Uh, so it will traverse uh, the um, uh, sibling nodes, right? The right, siblings. The siblings, right? It it uh, usually won't look in the children. But if you specify the C, was it? Uh, no, uh, just uh, without the C and without the plus, just one. So no, but if this I want way, the, the first it will it will get the first child. Oh, yeah. okay. So the one yeah. is the first child. Okay. Yes. Okay. Two is the second child. And the parent? Yeah. The parent. Uh, P P one or P. That's the parent two. of the button. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So this is the thing. So this is. Uh, so this this will return the first parent of Notepad which matches type button. All right. The yeah. first parent of Notepad. So you're always, this here is referring always to the Notepad element at this point, because- Yes, exactly. Not, because uh, point, point doesn't... by path is relative to the element you are starting from. Right, okay. Right? That's what I was going to say. It doesn't, it, yeah. it is not relative to the one that it found. It's relative to the one that you're selecting here. Yeah, because uh, find by path, you can use like one dot one, which will get the first child of the first child, right? Oh, uh, right, yeah. Of the notepad element. Right, now, this is is th this is something that you created. Is this part of the UIA, uh, the original library, or- This, this is what like I created. Right, this is syn syntax sugar is what we would call it. It's just yeah. to make your life easier, <laughs> which, which yeah. you will not find this method in the original UIA libraries. What mm -hmm. He it's uh, it's similar to the ACC, mm -hmm. uh, which also uses uh, similar paths. Right. Right. Okay. Now, in, in is yeah. that sorry? Um, is that number? Um, do you have a discovery tool to show that number? Yeah, I think when when you use the drop the drop was it the drop? I, I think yeah, it was in development when we did our videos before or something. If I no, but it, so so it was like drop no uh, dump. Or dump, dump all. Yes, dump. This one usually returns a list of the things with the path, the, the numeric path that you're referring yeah. to. So you can uh, you can see the, the tree the there. And you, yeah, can you dump yeah, it I in will, the dishboard, yeah. for Message example? Please. Yeah, I could just. Uh, I yeah. think Notepad doesn't have too many elements. I think I could do this. This is what you get. And uh, you see this number 1.1, 1.1.1, 1.1.2. That is actually the tree structure, which means that the number one is the first child of the yeah, but thing. Of the window. Of yeah, the, window. the notepad so window element. This is the notepad window, and the one is the first child, which is why he referred to one as the first child. And then, but this text editor has children as well. So it would be 1.1, 1.1.2, so on. So yes, there is a way for us to get that. Is there a way to only get the, no, well, no, I, I think that's a good thing. I was going to say like, can I only get the numbers and the name and not the type, for example? Uh, you would uh, code it yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I would have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's okay. You it's good. No, but at least this, this part of this type of thing, I could definitely parse it because probably separated well, by tabs or spaces? Uh, yeah, you can definitely me, parse it. Yeah. See, in, the, in the ACC viewer tool, right, It you can drag the thing to an item and it tells you this is the number. Right. right? The, the, mm -hmm. the path, excuse me. Right. Um, that's why I was thinking like, you know, and and, and I get it, that's glad if you're not going to create that, but maybe that's something we should create because, man, once you have that, it, it enables almost anybody right. to... To use I would suggest for this function, this space there should be a tab. 
so that I could split this screen. Mm -hmm. So each of these. Oh, I tried tabs, but tab it looked really ugly. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that, it, yeah, I understand. You know that it, it might look a well, little bit. Why not um, use a different character, like a pipe, or the weird character you use, as I assert, other than a pipe, right? There's something uh, else. Yeah, there. so I could use, I uh, usually use either Alt 7, which is a bullet point like that. I could use that. Or I use the 20, which is kind of this weird character, Alt 20. But in general, you could use any character that I could tell That's it to unique. split yeah. on that. Right. Um, usually regarding the fact that if you use tab delimited things right it is easier for you to parse and then display so if it returned it with tabs when i got it i could replace the tabs with spaces and that's it it looks however i want you see what i mean and the reason why yeah. i usually don't um don't i could add a delimiter argument for that actually oh cool what do you think that should be an uh, yeah that should be a parameter yeah. yeah that's correct let me let me try something because that's the other thing that i wanted to show you um usually oh hold on uh no not that but tsv for example let me try something out so this let's do this uh in the meantime so i understand your uh your being hesitant to add it that way but here's the interesting thing and 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 this is for anybody who is programming it's good to have tools that do what you want because for example in my case i have a tool that i could just click align and it aligns everything in columns you see that ah okay right so nice even though it's tab limited i could with this either shrink it or show it. So I could, if it is just about displaying, yeah, that's perfect. Notice that each column has its own color. You see that? This is a tool called um, CSV, uh, what was it? It is one of the extensions CSV, uh, Rainbow CSV, which allows me to, each column is gonna have its own color, which usually when I'm looking at the limited data is really, useful to know where it is even if it is not um organized because well, i know that this is for the second column you see well i was gonna say when data is not so wide if it's very narrow that would be really helpful right just just having different colors i know that this yeah. and that are on the same column even though they're not one below the other but again it still gives you the option to align it which in the end yeah if i really need to see this really quickly that would help out a lot. So, so, so again, I, I, I do suggest it, it would be nice to have a parameter to delimit it by a special character, even if you don't do it by default. I could decide, okay, return yeah. that in time. I agree. <laughs> I could use string split to just go ahead and parse it really quickly. You see, so that's a very good. Because yeah, uh, the problem is, if you use something that's already in there, otherwise, how does someone identify where the different things are? Right. Right. Like in a space or something. It's. Now, going back to the conditions and stuff like this. So find by path, great. Um, it is lifting the work from me. So I don't have to deal that much. I just type the conditions and it does it. Yeah. But if I want to have full control of the thing, I would need to create my own tree walker. How would I go about working with a tree walker? You said that you don't have any um, examples probably. Uh, I don't. I think I don't have any examples there. Um, I don't remember if I uh, right. wrote some in the GitHub. Um, let me just check quickly. Now, uh, I see here yeah. the create tree walker um, method, right? Now, what is the yeah, benefit so, of having a tree walker? Uh, yeah, so I checked the GitHub uh, wiki as well, and it doesn't have any good examples. So, <laughs> so this, uh, <laughs> this might be a very good topic, you know, to cover and uh, create. So, so what, what, what depends. What, so, what do you want to use the tree tree worker for? Th this this is exactly my first question. So my first question is, why would I need a tree walker? What is the benefit of using a tree walker? Uh, so, why why use a tree walker? 
uh, instead of uh, find uh, find first or find all. Right. Uh, so um, usually when I need the tree workers, it's because I want to get the next element inside the tree. So find first will return you um, an element uh, among the children or the descendants. So directly underneath the element. Right. Right. But with tree workers, you can traverse um, like laterally. You can you can uh, get the siblings of the right. element. Let, let, let so me, you cannot me, use find first for that. Let me let me and you make it visual. Use, let me let me and, do and this. you cannot use find first to get the parents of elements. Right. With tree workers, you can. Let me let me do this because it might be a little bit easier to grasp what you're referring to if I have something visual that could uh, say, for example, I would say Telegram might have a lot of things. Yeah, there we go. So mm -hmm. when you say, for example, that I want, uh, no, let's try, uh, maybe Zoom has? Huh. No. Yeah, Zoom is uh, the um, Chromium uh, element. So, uh, okay. But Chromium this type good. window, yeah. Yeah, this is good. So. <laughs> So let's yeah. say, for example, that I want the um, grab something from here. Let's say that I'm looking at the tree file explorer here, right? Mm -hmm. So when you say laterally, because you're saying when you refer to the descendants and children, I assume you're referring to these guys down here, right? Yeah. So with, but, with but if you want to get the button explorer section, this like one the, here. Yes, that one. But, but I don't know the name, tree right? Water. Oh, so, so oh, hold on. Let's say I have the parent element, which is the this guy here, right? So this okay. is my my executable, right? Yeah. This executable, which is my main uh, uh, executable, right? If I use find first by, it finds files trees explorer. If I have that condition, find first by. Mm -hmm. Type tree name files explorer. Is that right? It would find this yes, guy. Exactly. Okay. But if I use a find first by and I change it to type button and name explorer section, it would find this one instead. Is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, what you're saying is that with a tree walker, I can find first by this name, tree and files explorer, but I can actually get this element, the previous one above it. Yeah, is that what you're saying? Because and you, could, might, and you yeah. could get that with um, uh, the find by path minus one. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, right. So that's the same. That's yeah. But with the tree so you go back one element. Right? right. Okay. So now, when? Well, in my case, I would ask when would I need that? Well, if I don't know the name of the element above, let's say that this particular button changes position and something else might be there. And I say, hey, I want the files explorer. I want the button that is above it. I don't know the name. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it changed. Then it is better for me to use a tree walker, find the one that I know where it is, and get the element above it. Yeah, exactly. Really and it's it's especially useful in um, web browsers. So you might have, for example, uh, a login form. Mm -hmm. You have the word login or username. And then you have a text box, but the text box, uh, text box uh, doesn't have any recognizable um, name like or... uh, properties, right? It doesn't right. have a name. It doesn't have an automation ID. It has nothing. It's just a text box. Uh -huh. So you can find the login text or the, the username text. And, and then, then just get the next one right next. Text well, for example, element. this one. Notice that this element says main and it doesn't have a name, but probably exactly. it might happen exactly. that sometimes it, it 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 there might be another oh this is a very good example alert empty and alert empty so probably if i want this one here i find the complementary and then get yeah. the one above it is that exactly a like right? that because sometimes the the name or the type is not unique yeah. and it doesn't have a name either so you're like okay so how do i identify this thing well if you don't know the name or any properties or anything then you can define it by position is what you're saying. Exactly. The one below, the one the one previous to that. Okay. Yeah, and, and with a find by path, you can traverse in any direction in the tree. 
So if you have the, uh, let's see, tree debug console, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, the oh, the tree. tree. Let me see, hold on. Yeah, hold that on. one, next, one, for example, yeah. So if you use plus one, then you will get the text with bullet point. If you use minus one, you will get the button. If you use P1, then you will get the parent of that so, element. So, so the parent would be probably the, the content. No, the tab, I think. No, no the application. Oh, the application one. Okay. Yeah. So that would be the parent at that point. And, so you, if, and if you use just the, the number one, it you would will be get the, the one first below it. child. Right. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Okay. So, but again, now how do I do that with a tree walker? So, so if, say for example, yeah. say for example, because this is okay. the point. So, so, so here, here's the point. What I'm trying to to get at, yeah. The find path, find by path is a very convenient thing to learn because it makes it easier for me. Yeah. What if so, I find myself in a situation that I cannot use the find by path? I have to understand. What if you are in is. such a situation, then right. uh, be prepared for pain. <laughs> 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 Wait, let me um, write that down. Hold on. Right. <laughs> no, but so, this is this is good. yeah. First, so first you have to uh, first you have to create the condition ah. that the tree walker we will use. So we would say create a condition, create condition. So, so this is... if you want to get uh, well, what kind of element would you like? Well, let's use any type. element or no, let's some use type. type button. Yeah. So this would okay, give so... me all the buttons. All the buttons, yeah. Okay, so this or is it, it will filter by buttons, right? Right. So this is my filter. So I have my filter now. Yeah. Then what do then, I do? Then you pass that condition into the tree walker. So to the create tree walker. Yeah. Okay. So I pass the condition there. And now I have a tree walker. So so this group, so this tree here is only buttons. And it would yes. does it does it keep the 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 structure of the buttons? Uh, I mean, um, I haven't uh, very thoroughly tested it, mm -hmm. uh, but it seems it kind of uh, kind of modifies the tree a little bit. So can it, I use it might, on that? Uh, so for example, if you are looking for the sibling button, it, uh, it might uh, traverse uh, the tree uh, laterally. Mm -hmm. And then it might return a child of um, of an element. So if you start from, let's select something from there. If you start from the button um, mm -hmm. and you uh, try to look for the next button, it, uh, it might return you the close secondary sidebar, or it might return, for example, in the tree files explorer, if it has a sibling element with type button, it might return that. Oh, so so it, it so hold on. Uh, so from here, yeah. you said you are starting from there, and uh, the next one, three files explorer. It yeah. might have a button in there. If that has a button, it might return that. Oh right. So it, and that's what I meant. It doesn't keep. Def, it doesn't probably keep the yeah, whole structure. It doesn't always keep the structure. I, uh -huh. I haven't uh, quite figured out how it modifies the tree mm. because uh, I it think isn't it, that, it isn't explained very well I, either. If you, I think I read that it flattens it, which means that it it doesn't contain the hierarchy anymore. It's just all the buttons are listed. Well, it mm. so so that would be. It, the DOM comparison is you're looking for tags and it's anywhere under that, right? So right. So it would grab it, it all might tags. be that. It might be that, but right. it's not the hundred percent. It right. might you, be if a button really... has a child button. Right. So if there's another but button down here, we don't know. It have, like, yeah, it would list them both as 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 if they were on the same level. So you would might... need to play around a little bit to okay. figure out how it works. Yeah. Right. Now the other thing is so. Now I got my condition. I have okay. a list of buttons. So can I now you have a tree walker? Yeah. Can I use the dump all on a tree walker? I don't think so. No, no. A tree walker is just something you use uh, to traverse uh -huh. the tree. Okay. Right. To get objects out of it. So I could to get now, objects out of it. So now if I have a tree walker, how can so, I get the first element on this tree walker? Uh, so if you want to get the next sibling, you use uh, get next sibling element. 
-huh. And then you put your uh, element inside there as an argument. So, My for example, notepad element. This guy. Yeah, for example. So, or so document the, element. Or the document, whatever. But, but in general, I would put... so. This is my tree. Ah, that's why it's so difficult for me to get yeah. it. Yeah. Because the tree belongs to the notepad element. But in this configuration, I'm passing the notepad element to the tree, which makes no sense to me. It's, yeah. it's the opposite, the, right? The tree walker wal walks your element to another direction, right? <laughs> right. For, for me, <laughs> you know what, like what, what would have made sense to me was notepad element get next sibling element and then i would pass the tree walker to get me the next one in that walker you see that makes it, a little bit more it sense it would to me. make more sense indeed but yeah <laughs> but go general, ask microsoft yeah they they decided that's the way hold on bill bill what did you uh, mr gates <laughs> <laughs> no but in general I, I i am understanding now so get next sibling element so let me see something uh get previous sibling, I would assume. Yeah, exactly. uh, Parent, I would say the get parent element. Is that is that something that I could do? Like get the parent element of a tree walker? Uh, uh, of a tree? I, I think, yeah, that, uh, yeah. Get parent element is, uh, is uh, one way. Or mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, use normalize element in some cases. Oh God, let me just one second. Start it raining. Give me just one minute. This is really helpful stuff, Desclada. Thanks for walking through it all. With no this. problem. It's such a complicated topic. <laughs> and it's, it's you know, this, I and think people watch these videos and it really helps them use it. So, yeah. You, you know, this is this is the reason I am, uh, I am really redesigning it for V2 to make it easy from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to use the tree walkers or the conditions that much. Gotcha, right. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I've talked to a lot of people about that who've built really cool tools. And they're like, if I, I wish I knew at the beginning what I knew after I created this tool because I would have redesigned it entirely differently, you know, yeah. ending everything. And, and that's what you're... <laughs> And I getting into right of like exactly that. How do I really know what's going on? I can make a much better tool. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So, um, one of the things that I could do is go to the um, library interface, look for tree worker, and probably find. You can use the GitHub wiki as well. I have the methods listed there. Okay. Okay. Uh, class UIA uh, underscore tree walker. Okay, this is the one. So that way I could just take a look at what it could do, get the parent, yes. the first child, the last child, Next siblings, previous siblings, normalize. What when you say normalize, is that what does that mean? Yes, a normalize element means that um, uh, if your element that you passed in matches the condition you set, then it will return that element. Otherwise, it will check if the parent matches that condition and return that or the parent of the parent. So it will go up the tree until it finds a matching uh, ele uh, element. Okay, so if it doesn't find it, it just keeps searching up. Yeah, upwards, upwards. yeah. Right. So you can, for example, use that, uh, uh, if you have uh, any, um, uh, a any element inside VS Code, for example, then you can use normalize element to get uh, to the document element. So you set uh, set the condition to type equals document, and uh -huh. then normalize and get... element will always take you to that element. All right. Yeah, because that the the the, the VS Code only has one document element. Exactly. That's what you're saying. So it doesn't matter what I do if I make the condition to be the document element. 
doesn't matter where where I search, it would find it. Now, you mentioned that it looks upwards. So for example, if I use the uh, the executable, so as I did in the example here, that the first thing I get is the element from the executable here. Mm -hmm. Does that look down and find the document or only upwards? Uh, so if you are starting from, uh, from that element, mm -hmm. then uh, what will you use? If you use find first, then it will only look downwards. No, if but you use tree walker with uh, the get first uh, child element, uh -huh. then it will look in the children. But how about if I use this one and say normalize? Would... If you, uh, normalize to where? Right. So, so, so <laughs> let's say, so let me, let me make it. So it so will still go my upwards. Condition, it, it will only look upwards. This is my point. So yeah. I got my notepad element. My type would be document, right? So probably just yeah. one. This is my condition. I create my tree walker. I got mm -hmm. it. And now I say normalize element. And that would be my, my. So notepad. that will return nothing. Ah, that's because, what I said. Because no element matches the condition. Because it's not going to go, it's not going to, nothing above yeah. notepad. It gets to the root there. element, uh, sees that it's not it and returns nothing. Right. So basically I cannot use the normalized element downwards for that i would yeah. have to use find get... first find all something like that okay. or get uh, get first uh, that is interesting around. that the tree walker only works upwards in that particular situation that's that's a very interesting choice you would usually go down what <laughs> probably because of how it's created probably the way how they created the first element in is the first one out so yeah it is yeah. a way of how things are stored okay I'm understanding more or less. Now, I'm still failing to understand what would, well, I would say, what is the speed difference between find first? Because here's the thing, by type button, right? This yeah. is my condition. This gives me the whole tree walker based on a button. So it's mm -hmm. filtering by buttons. And I would find... So I would, uh, what was it, get next sibling or probably first child, get first child element. I would assume that doing this, filtering by button, creating my tree walker and getting the element is the same as just saying notepad element dot find first by and then just putting type equals button. Those two things are, in the end, might return the same button. They might return, they might not. It okay. uh, depends on uh, how UI automation handles the flattening of the tree, as you mentioned, whether right. it flattens it or not. Okay. And uh, what kind of uh, tree scope you use for find first by. So if you use tree scope uh, children, uh, then uh -huh. it will only look in the children, uh, whereas the tree walker might we'll flatten look. the tree and look in descendants as well. Okay. Or it might not flatten the tree and uh, yeah, look only in the children. I understand. Right. So, now, here's the thing. Here's my question. Would this be faster than this? Uh, again, depends on the situation. Probably not much. Probably because I was, much. I was thinking... If you I use was... uh, find first by with uh, tree scope children, then I think find first by will be faster. But I'm not sure. This is this. Let me let me let me give you my my why I'm thinking that. Find first by will look through the whole tree. Ignoring... No, it 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 will look only in the descendants of the element you are uh, starting from. Okay, but not but the whole say, tree. No, yeah. well, I understand, but it is the whole tree for Notepad. Is, uh, let's, yeah, let's talk yeah. about it. So yeah. let's talk about okay. Notepad. Mm -hmm. So when yeah. I'm talking about tree at this point, it's just okay. the Notepad tree, right? So yes. find first by would search through the whole tree and anything that does not match this particular filter will be ignored. That's what yeah. I'm understanding. 
until it meets the first, the first button. one and then goes away. Yeah. Yes. On the second hand, uh, on the other hand, for this one here, I minimize the tree. I filter the whole tree to only contain buttons. So it should be a, a, a smaller tree than the whole notepad tree. Yeah. And as it but, is smaller, but I, I, I would assume I am that not sure faster. that UI automation does that behind the mm -hmm. scenes. I don't know that. So, I, okay. So I, will, I, I, will I can't answer that. Okay. I will but you can try speed testing it. This is the, this no, what the, the point I'm trying to make is that if there is no speed difference between Fives First and Tree Walker, I don't think what the idea is. I would assume as a programmer that the benefit of a tree walking thing is to filter down the list to be smaller. And that way, not only you can traverse back and forth, but also it's a smaller tree, so it might be faster. But I don't know, right? That, that was basically my question there. Mm -hmm. Because I'm filtering the whole thing first. That's that, that's basically uh, when I that, do that this, might That might even uh, take longer, right? So first oh. you have to filter the whole tree, but with uh -huh. the find first, you traverse okay. the tree until you find the first one. Right. No. Well, in, in now, which now, case now you, might not, uh, you might not you uh, might not need to traverse the whole tree. Let's Only talk a small about find by. Now let's talk about find by uh, in this case. Find first by. Uh, no, but let's 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 not use the first one. Uh, I want to find. Can I can I find by expression? I think it is possible. There there is no such find, find, method as oh, no, find so, by. So find, find all. Find all. Yeah. All right. By. Okay. So find all by. So let's talk about find all by. Yeah. So find case, all by will mm -hmm. uh, will traverse the whole tree. Right. That, that that's yeah. what I'm referring to. Okay. So because the find first by stops at the first match, which I understand. But now, would you say that find all by is slower than the tree walking if it is filtered? Uh, if the tree walker is filtered. I mean flattened, right? So yep. if the if the whole tree is um, is uh, looked through and only the button elements uh, are filtered out and the tree is flattened, then find all by will do pretty much the same thing, right? It will also traverse the whole tree and filter out all the buttons. So it might be about the same speed. Hold on, because you, UI automation will have to traverse the whole tree. In no, well, but, but here's the thing. I, I think I know now. Yeah, I, that, my intuition is driving me to something because what I would do as a programmer is at the beginning of my program, I create different tree workers in different conditions. So I have sections of the tree. And whenever I want to find a button, I'm not going to use find for find all by. I I'm, I'm pretty sure it. UI automation doesn't do that. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, because conditions, um, there are way too many different conditions that you can create. No, to, but what uh, I meant, what I meant is this. Uh, no, no, let, let, me, let, me, let me do this. This is the edit condition. So now, um, so BTN tree walker and EVT tree walker. So now, at the beginning of my program, so as soon as I start my program, I build these tree walking objects based on those conditions. So when uh, later so, on, so for when example, you create the tree walker, you will already filter the tree, right? Right. And now, and now yeah, this yeah. only contains okay. edit button. This only contains edits. This only contains buttons. I see what you mean. And then yeah. later on in my program, while I'm working with different things, if you have uh, yeah. very intensive resources, if I'm looking for a button, instead of using find all by, because it looks for the whole tree, I mm -hmm. would only use it in I my button mean. tree, yeah. right? So it would, it definitely should be faster is what I'm trying to understand. But, but the point is- If they have done that, then yes. But, but and this is the point. So I don't this, know. No, but this, I would do it, no, because you have to do it yourself as a programmer, but I would say like, I build my, the, my custom tree once, I just build it once and later on my program can search very fast that many times 
yeah. instead of every time I call it, it would search the whole thing. It's, it's basically my, and, and in Notepad, you will not notice the difference, but as soon as you have a program like, you know, this thing that has way too many things, mm -hmm. I don't the want to- The trouble is that with UI automation, uh, the tree can change at any point. Yeah, that's true. I, yeah. I But <laughs> that that is interesting. That's another part I understand now why you have this, uh, well, why UIA has these other functions, which are the build, the build cache and stuff like that. So yes. it might be that you can build a you build a cache and certain at certain uh, situations. Say, for example, if you click on certain buttons, right away update your tree just in case it has changed or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, maybe that's the. So, so you can use the build cache functions to snapshot uh, snapshot the tree, right? Right. And then mm. you can use that multiple times. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so I, I'm, it should I'm be faster. I'm understanding more or less how this is working now. And that's the, that's the interesting part. It's good that you mentioned that because if you create your tree like this, as I'm just suggesting at the beginning of your program and during execution, that tree changes, you're not going to be able to find the stuff in your tree because it's not the current uh, information. So again, unless it is something that does not change very often, I don't see a good reason why to do this instead of just using the find all or, you know, doing that. So I think yeah. using the find all or using the find, the find by path, I think that's the best solution most of the time. I Right now, with what we have been speaking about trees and something like that, I do not find a very good reason why I would do that on a program that changes very often. That's, that's basically. Yeah. Because so every if time you, you if switch. If you have a program, yeah. If you have a program that doesn't change very often, then you, you could use the caching. Then mm -hmm. it will save the tree. And uh, looking looking uh, inside the same tree is uh, right. usually much much faster right. than uh, than accessing the running program. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The up to date program, but caching is a really advanced topic which we probably shouldn't <laughs> go inside. Right no, now. no, and and it is a little bit uh, dangerous in quotation marks in the sense of yeah the change the program might change at any moment and you will not notice. There is no way for me to query the, the the UIA and say, has it changed? Is that something that you can do? Can you compare? You can trees? set you can set up events. Uh -huh. Yeah, like change event or focus uh, changed event. That, that's so you can do that concept. and then then update the cache. Oh, that's a very good, how, how do you set up a an event? How the, let me see. Is uh, that so class? in examples, you have, uh, let's see, uh, example handling. seven. Seven. or or eight yeah whichever oh, that's interesting so all oh, right this is so great. this this uh, uses the focus uh, changed event so if you run it it automatically um, catches or re-updates the tree that's a great yeah you can you can try it out so let me let me try this so what it does is that it will go ahead and uh it will run chrome uh, incognito, uh -huh, and right. then it will start uh, uh, checking for focus changed events. All right. So let me. Uh, and if it detects uh, that uh, your um, address bar has any text inside of it, then it will clear it. Okay. Let's double check. <laughs> let me see. So I have this. So yeah. cut event element name doesn't have a name when I yeah, click no inside. Name. Right. Yeah. The editor is not accessible. That's correct. Yeah. So if, if you type something in your address bar now, uh, I think the old... script. I think the script stopped. Try. No, the script stopped because it says like. Oh. Oh well. Connection no, result. maybe no. But let me try something. Right. So, yeah, the script stopped somehow. Yeah, it stopped. It's uh, it stopped. So let me let me try that again. I have that. If I type in there. Yeah, and then click in the address bar again. It, it will just clear it. Clear it. Okay. Yeah. So you, for you, example, you... this is an example of the focus changed event. Uh huh. Yeah. 
That is interesting. So, so, and this is a good situation in which I could use. And how many events are, can you track? Is there? Um, is there? What do you mean? There's so, no limit. There's, <laughs> there's no, no. What I mean is, events. like, for example, focus changed is one of them. Yeah. But what other? So we have the add event handler, right? So add focus mm -hmm. change event handler. Um, what other methods are there? How can I find them? CUIA. So it's in the UIA uh, enumerations class. And if you look for event IDs, then you should find it. Class enum. So UIA. UIA e enum. Yeah. Right. So And then look for uh, event ID. It's somewhere down, yeah. down <laughs> below. Yeah, I understand. Let me see. Ah, here. Yeah, there. These are the so, ones that I could. Oh, tooltip opened and closed. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Structure changed. That's the one that I'm most yeah. interested in. So I could capture that particular event. And if the structure of the page changed, I could go ahead and rebuild my cache yes. for my tree. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Okay. Element selection. Wow. That's interesting. I like that. Oh man, you're doing, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> I know what you're doing. Uh, this is, this has always been a thing of mine. If I remember, I, I already had a solution for this, but if you have an array or let's talk V1 for a second. If you, if have, you have an array, an array that is too long, then you will get an error. No, but what I meant is, sorry, not an array, an object. In which yeah, sorry, object, the yeah. 2000, uh, 200 and item name. Uh, you can so, access the property by 200. Right. So, but so, so but you if, can... you have, if you have too many properties uh, in one definition, then it will throw an error. There's no, a no, limit. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me explain what I'm getting at with this. So this will return the word item, right? Yes. But I also want that when I do item, it returns 200. Yes. But of course, what you would have to do is create an item that has the number 200 in it. So now the same value is duplicated. You see that? Yeah. But um, you can set up a function to handle that. For that's example. what I was going to say. Like, the, the, I, If I remember correctly, what I did is that I created a class that acts as a property, like, like an object like this. But yes. then... If you get the the opposite of it, it just returns the the value or the name. So, uh, in here, I'm noticing that you're having exactly the same issue because you're having tooltip opened 2,000, 20,000, but then twenty thousand is tooltip opened. So you have the two kind of like <laughs> you have yeah. the same information <laughs> twice because it's, it's, the, it's the exact thing, uh, same right. thing. Right? Yeah. Yes. yeah, it is yeah. a very interesting. Okay, so uh, at this point. Yeah, and this is exactly what you're doing. It's a function that does the, if it is not a number, return the ID. If it is an integer, return the name. Yeah. And uh, these are not uh, all the available events uh, because uh, these event IDs are only for the um, uh, add automation event handler. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you, if you want to, um, you have other options as well. For, for example, uh, structures changed event handler or focus changed event handler. Uh -huh. And you have some more um, up to date, uh, like change as event or, um, or notification event, for example. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it, it has separate functions for that that okay. were added later on to UI automation. Perfect. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. But this is a very good, I didn't know that, that you could track events on UIA. That's amazing. So not only- You I can could... do the same thing in ACC. Oh, I actually. didn't know that. Uh, Joe, yeah. were you aware of that? Were you aware of the fact that you could track events in ACC? Like events of oh. a program? Yeah. You have uh, accessible oh. object from event and you have to set up the event handler yourself. Oh. That is um, that is actually it's really helpful to know. Yeah, right. Because in general, 
we've been talking about how do we know when something's been done, right? Yeah, when somebody clicked, when somebody deleted something, when somebody selected something, and actually, uh, I have that set up in the ACC v2 library. Uh, and actually, it is interesting selection pattern. What is the selection pattern, by the way? Get current selection. Can you well, get if you if you select something like a list, you can select the list item. Then uh, the selection pattern will handle that. Let me let me try that. Hold on. Okay, I say okay, and if uh, okay, okay. Uh, you're talking so, about when you select stuff like yes. this in a list. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's uh, that's the selection pattern. Right. Oh, okay. That's what I meant. Because what I'm looking for, we have been talking about, and is detecting when user selects text like this. And ah, I that brought something. Yeah, I have an example for that. In let's see where that is. I think it's example eight, maybe. Uh -huh. Yeah. But yeah. and and you, I think you mentioned this. It doesn't work everywhere. It's just like no, no. only uh, if the text pattern is implemented. If the text pattern is implemented, yeah, wow, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Really good to know to, to And you can see that I am using the text selection changed event ID. Right, yeah, yeah. So here you're also having a, a, a an event handler. So when somebody look at that text selection changed. That is amazingly good. And and when you say, hold on, let me let me get this straight. So let's say that I have uh you know, hey viewer. Uh so when you say the text uh uh let me see, hold on. You're talking about these guys. If it is a, well, that is not a pattern. No, that is, that is a uh, so freeze there. Uh, Presses um, escape. Escape. Yeah. yeah. Right. So look at the element patterns. Uh, left side uh, low. Yeah. So you see that text and text pattern two are implemented for that control. This, yeah. For that control. Yeah. So text pattern and text pattern two are implemented. This means that you should. The, be, be able, able to, get to this, use the, the, selection. the selection event. Hold on, let me let me double check something. So whether say for example that I have this window here, and you're saying that that might not be implemented everywhere. So it so, it might show you that it has text, uh, but it might not be implemented. Like this here, it it, it yeah. might say text here, but it might not be implemented. How how do I know if it was implemented or not? You have to test it out. <laughs> if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Right, okay. Uh, uh, just a tip that uh, usually uh, the programs that are created by Microsoft uh, support UI automation amazingly well. Yeah, so yeah. Microsoft Edge works very well. All right. Now, usually, now. usually uh, everything in Edge, uh, e even in the web pages, uh, support the text pattern, for example, properly. Now, let me let me let me uh, ask something because here it says, "Click here to enable ACC path capturing." Now, is this the is this the one that we were referring to a few minutes ago, like the the one that we were talking about by path, or this is the actual ACC path, the one this from is the, the ACC actual ACC path? Because uh, in the beginning, when I created the uh, UIA viewer, and some people requested that I add that because mm -hmm. uh, ACC's, uh, ACC viewer wasn't giving the correct paths. Uh -huh. But this one is. <laughs> right. Now, yeah. and is, is there, so is maybe a way probably to have both the ACC and the new UIA? Because I think the UIA path and the ACC path are different things, are they? Yeah, you can get that, but not with the UIA viewer. You have to use the dump right. hole and the, it will give uh -huh, you the path. Exactly. The dump yeah, hole will I mean. give you exactly the path. What I'm, what I'm thinking about is whether it would be nice to have in this tool. You see, in this tree viewer, maybe have yeah, also Yeah, I, I didn't want to implement it for uh, UI automation because uh, 
usually usually there are better, better methods available right so yeah. it's it's yeah. very very rare that you should use the path like this and yeah. it might lead people in the wrong direction all right okay yeah I understand Okay, so, okay. so the so the advantage of uh, UI automation is that you don't have to um, use this you, tree. You don't yeah. have to use the tree. You don't have to depend on the tree changing or not changing. So mm. ACC will stop working if the tree changes. Right. Um, yes. Yes. In that some was, certain that was, ways. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. That was one of but, the things that we that we noticed that, for example, this path, for example, if Chrome get, yeah, or this page change. gets updated, it could change. Yeah. Not often that it changes, but it could. Just to no, make... it's actually quite uh, quite often in my experience. If Chrome gets updated, if you add uh, new plugins, if you, uh, yeah, anything might change the path. Right. So, um, so it is better not to search by path, but actually by the text, usually, text yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's uh, it's usually best to use the smallest path possible. So that's right. why uh, uh, the plus ones and minus ones um, are implemented. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Wow, that that was that was very enlightening. There was a few things that I didn't know that you could do that now I know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if Joe has any other questions. No, that was yeah. That's very awesome. Yeah. When, what, by the way, and, and I don't mean this as a way to say pressure stuff, but I know you're, you know, looking at the V2 thing. What, what's your status on that? Of uh, Well, it's, um, well, mostly working, uh, but still in the alpha stages. So it okay. might uh, radically change. Yeah. So you could have a lot of different yeah. stuff going on, but um, uh so you're thinking that you're probably not going to have it for this year, like this year, next year? No, I think it's uh, in the in the ne coming months, probably. Oh, oh yeah. sounds good. Actually, that's amazingly good. That's a very good. A lot of people are asking, hey, more videos on UIA, like people oh. really want to learn about it. And, and yeah. it would be a very good news for people who are going to start with V2 or that are switching over to know that, hey, this very good library is going to be available there too. That's amazingly good. So uh, there are some um, major changes there. So for example, the, um, the expression syntax uh, will not be used there. You, I mean, the type uh, equals uh, button. So uh, in the new version, you have to use an object that has a property uh, type and then you have the value set to button. Okay, so you, you have kind of, right, so I, I understand. I, I have imp implemented uh, ACC v2 uh, in the same manner. So there you have also the find uh, functions. Um, let, me, which, let, me, uh, let me share my screen for a second and verify if I understood correctly. Say, for example, I would have an object that has, so I would say, in V2, you have to do it right now. Type button and value equals uh, or name name equals uh, you know edit whatever. Yeah, that so is what I would have to say. Say find so on my element tree element dot find first by or find first. Find first, yeah, right, and, and then, then the uh, object. Yeah, but you don't or have I to could just an object, right. you can put it right there. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like so just, that, that will yeah. be the, the syntax. Mm. Okay. It is a little bit clear. Um, how do you do the ands and ors? Uh, so the curly brackets uh, is ands and uh, arrays. Oh, so I, I could have an array or... of, right. So, so I could have, oh, hold on. Yeah. That right. that would create an or condition for both of those. Right. So basically, I would have. Let me just make it like this. So I have an array of objects, and in V two, you don't need to put that there. So it would be an array of two objects, and it would find if it is an object that means and it should be type button and name edit yes or type button and name button two 
exactly that. that. Okay, so that yeah. that is, and it's going to be passed as an array of objects. That that yeah. is perfect. I like that. I I really find that a little bit easier to understand. Um, well, it it might not be that easy when you, for example, want to create a not condition. Uh, right. <laughs> so then what, you yeah, no, you have well, to create an object uh, with the keyword uh, not yeah, you, and the right. value of that array. Right. Right. Oh, right. Oh, I understand what you see. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. And for example, another one, and that would be not. So that would be, well, this is an array of objects. Yeah, I get your point. Unless yeah. the object itself, which is, for example, type, and then you say uh, condition equals not. Maybe. Like have a key, yeah. a very. Or maybe that. Right. Yeah. So, something like that, that I know that this particular condition is going to be a not or an and or whatever. But, well, I would say just for the not or something. Yeah. Something that, like that. Or that. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I get your point. It sometimes might be a little bit. You have to get used to it is the point. Because one yeah. is used to something like type equals button and name equals now you know what i i would definitely suggest rethinking that idea because one of the good interesting things that came with um when i use the uia viewers the the windows one is that i can right click and copy the thing and paste it here so mm -hmm. so for example uh, oh, well uh, the accessibility controls for windows oh god Oh, that is interesting. It's not working. Oh, here it goes. Okay. okay. So I could usually do this right click, copy, it, and then I would go back here and just type, uh, paste it here and change the, sorry. Oh, God, this thing stays there. I mean, just remove it. And it, in this tab here, I would just convert it to an equals. You see that? It was a very simple edit mm -hmm. that I had to do. I just had to put an equal sign there. But if we are using objects, now I have to, the whole thing say. Now you have I, to. Uh, yeah, I have to remove. No, no, no. You don't have to. You can use control type, then uh, colon, and oh. then select control type edit uh, and put the curly brackets around it, right? That's it? Oh, no, that, then that's okay. Okay, so the, the change. Oh, right. Yeah, of course, because each of it is. It's now the so let me let me so if I paste that I just have to put a colon and the quotation marks oh no then that's okay that's perfect yeah and curly brackets right of course yeah the curly brackets I would probably yeah. type them first but that's interesting yeah I, I thought that it was gonna be a bigger change Much but different. it's not right yeah I mean I I, I do really uh, like the <laughs> old expression uh, syntax but uh, it has uh, so many problems like uh, for example if you if you have uh, double quotes in the string, or you have or, you have or yeah, and double yeah. quotes in the string. What do you do? Then no, you have to start have escaping the double quotes. Then I have right. to like uh, uh, deal with that in regular expressions, uh, which right. no, no, <laughs> gets I very very messy. Look at this. So so this is a very interesting situation here in which you now have this as an array. You see that. But probably that is going to be text like that too, right? So all of it is going to be text. Uh, so far, you can't uh, actually uh, filter by bounding rectangle. You cannot? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, but, but that was something that I was kind of like wondering. But this is interesting. So again, yeah, I, I was thinking something else. But the fact that you can uh, use objects is perfect. Um, because um, now it's not going to be that yeah. hard to do that. Right. Yeah. True okay. shouldn't be in uh, quotes, but otherwise, yeah. Oh, uh, hold on. That's something interesting because true. That's a string, would... right? But not the value true. Yeah. No, but this is the problem. In, in our hotkey, true evaluates to one. Yes. But is in... keyboard focusable is one or zero. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so true so is they... one. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's no, not so a string it's... true. It's uh, one. That's what I was going to say. So so basically, they, they do is keyboard focusable is going to return zero or one. 
Yes. Not okay. Not true, true or false. They're, they're but, showing yeah. it as true here, but oh, that's yeah, great. Exactly. I was just going to ask about that, but that's great. That's perfect. Because uh, I, yeah, I understand. Perfect. Okay. I think I, I, I got a lot. And then I'm really pumped by the next version. If it is on V2, I, I would like to. I would like to have that <laughs> because right now, and actually that's how I'm doing it. Um, for auto hotkey, I have the leap folder. My V2 script, my V2 libraries are outside. All of those are V2 libraries. And the V1 ones, I have them kind of like archived in the V1 folder. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing. And UIA automation yeah. is there. So I'm like, uh, but let me show you something. This is, again, not that you have to do it this way, but let me show you what I do. For example, the script object function, I converted it to B2. But what I'm doing is I just have one folder and I am keeping that. Let me show you here. I am keeping two branches. I have the V1 master and V1 development. And the other one, the master and the development are V2. You see what I mean? So I'm keeping yeah. I'm keeping all in one folder. I, I don't have like a folder for V1 and a folder for V2. I just keep them here. And I have just a branch for V1 and a branch for V2 is what I'm doing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> that way, that way I have all my code in one place. And usually if I have a very interesting fix on one of them, I could merge them yeah. most of the time. I just merge certain things. Um I could definitely it, it is just keeping both versions alive in the same location is for me a little easier. <laughs> not for everybody. <laughs> this is not for everybody. But yeah. Um, yeah, glad to see that you're actually working on that um, and, and, and the direction that it's taking. I really like it. I'm, I'm just pumped to see when it is available for V2. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna take a little bit of time, but yeah, yeah, hopefully, hopefully in a few months. Yeah. <laughs> It, it oh, and uh, I'll just mention that uh, the object uh, syntax uh, is uh, not actually my idea. It's uh, it's from the user Tickby. I'm not sure how you. Uh huh. Tickby. You know? yeah, <laughs> that's, that's exactly how I mentioned it. That's the guy yeah. from from V2 as well. Yeah, he he's yeah, the one yeah. that created the Lexer. So, yeah, he came up with that one. Uh, he yeah. he created an uh, UI automation library, so it's already available. It's yeah, just I mean, uh, I'm adding a lot of stuff to, stuff to it and making it easier to use. His his library I I downloaded it and I found yours to be a little bit more easy to understand. So his is more. Uh, his diverges. is more directly converted from the original UI automation implementation. And it's pretty yeah. much one one to one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, but and that, that's uh, why I, I found it's it way so too advanced. <laughs> It's not, it's not about the advanced of it. It's the complicated that it becomes for creating very simple stuff. It really yeah, becomes really true. difficult to do something simple, which yes. is, I, I'm all for syntax sugar, which is how we call it, in which, yeah, you get a library. It's a very good library, but they did it wrong. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's how I think about it. Like, yeah, that, that's not how it's to be. You should not make yourself your life harder when you're using a library should be easier it should for be you. as simple as possible that's yeah. the idea <laughs> okay so i'm not right. i'm gonna stop asking questions here because i could go on forever we have been in, at this for two hours now almost <laughs> yeah, so. maybe maybe one last question no? <laughs> <laughs> i just remember one. <laughs> oh, no it is okay it's okay yeah well thank you for all your work on that that's glad very cool. Okay. I know a lot of people are commenting on the videos yeah. and they get a lot of views that, you know, people really love this overall. I mean, it's so incredibly powerful, right? Like it it's, is. It's, it, is. it has so many faults, but it is so yeah, powerful. Yeah. Well, <laughs> tricky to use. Awesome. Better than sending keystrokes and mercy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Thank you.